really came out of a series I wrote called Clarice Bean. And I wanted Clarice to be really obsessed with a series that she's discovered in the way that we, we all get very excited about a series, whether it's a book series or a TV series. And I wanted um, Clarice to have got really hooked on this thriller series uh, because I love thrillers and detective stories and secret agent stories. So I invented this character called Ruby Redfort and she's an American school kid. She's 13 years old. And I wanted her to be very, very clever. Clever at a whole range of things. So shes it's not just maths, but maths is one of the things she's really good at. And I decided that she would be a code cracker. And codes are brilliant because they can they can cover all kinds of things. So there's there's taste codes, smell codes, um, um, visual codes, but also math codes. And when it came to um, coming up with these codes, I wanted them to be really really difficult because otherwise you won't be convinced that she's this this genius kid that I say she is if if you can just crack the codes really easily. So what we decided to do was to ask um, sort of maths professor Marcus de Sotoy, and, and he works at Oxford University, um, and he, we got him to come in and write us some maths codes, which he did brilliantly. But they had to be really interesting ones as well, so that they they, they cover a whole range of of different different things and some of them are actually sound codes so we've got other people to come in to to help with that but he was brilliant and he was very very good at explaining to me and what's interesting about it is that maths is not my subject i i was not good at school at maths but i've always been very interested in it because maths comes into everything numbers come into everything and my father taught me drawing he taught me art and he would get frustrated when people didn't see what a complicated subject art is also because art has got lots of maths in it too and so has music and so numbers are in everything and i wanted to to explain that it's interesting but not by telling you but by writing stories that i hope you will find interesting and exciting and thrilling and see the way that these codes come in. And some of these codes you will be able to solve, and that's rather satisfying. And some of them perhaps you won't because they really are incredibly tough codes. Ruby sauntered into class just before Mrs. Driscoll, her homeroom teacher, called out her name. Mrs. Driscoll made the same comment she always made when Ruby was late, and Ruby made the usual faces behind her back. The truth was, Mrs. Driscoll found Ruby Redford rather full of herself, utterly unmanageable and impossible to teach. Ruby Redford found Mrs. Driscoll a royal pain in the derriere. They were both right. When it came to teaching the cleverest student in the history of Twinford Junior High, Mrs. Driscoll was out of her depth. On the other hand, it was a little pathetic for a grown-up teacher to be so snarky. Once this little pupil-teacher exchange was over, Ruby went and sat down next to Clancy. So was last night fun? whispered Ruby. Well, that depends on what you call fun. My sister Nancy accidentally sat on the Spanish ambassador's dessert, replied Nancy. Oh, well, at least she got dessert. Some of us weren't so lucky, said Ruby. What? said Clancy. Never mind, I'll tell you later, whispered Ruby. It was the usual twin for junior high day, nothing in any way out of the ordinary. Ruby had the usual interaction with her arch enemy, Vapona Begwell, which went something like this. Vapona, hey Ruby, can you see out of those glasses? Because my suggestion would be, don't look in the mirror if you don't want to give yourself a fright. Ruby, why, are you going to be standing behind me? There was a mildly interesting geography lesson, followed by a mind-numbingly dreary French class. Ruby's French was already so good that she spent the lesson reading War and Peace in the original Russian. History had Mrs. Schneiderman promising in the next week or so to give a lecture on the Jade Buddha of Khotan. 
My, is it ever the most fascinating story, she said. I could talk about it forever. Meet my folks and you probably will, muttered Ruby. At lunchtime, Ruby got into an altercation with Mrs. Arthur over the Let Them Eat Cake t-shirt she was wearing. Ruby was protesting about Mrs. Arthur's strict guidelines about cake, or more accurately, no cake. Mrs. Arthur had banned cake. Mrs. Arthur, cake is in no way essential and should not be present in any child's diet. Ruby, cake is one of life's great wonders and who would deny wonder to a child? All the pupils, with the exception of Denning Minkle, who had a sugar allergy, supported Ruby. However, Ruby was requested to turn her t-shirt inside out or risk a month of detention. However, Ruby was requested to turn her t-shirt inside out or risk a month of detention. Ruby said goodbye to Clancy, who was being kept behind so he could retake his French vocab test. He was nervous. French made him feel queasy. And Madame Loop gave him the shivers. You'll be fine, Clance, said Ruby. She secretly slipped him an index card. Copy this list onto your arm and you'll have no problem. The piece of paper had all the test answers written in code. The code they had devised a couple of years ago and perfect for a situation like this. To the regular human on the street, it just looked like gobbledygook. Then it was time to catch the bus back to Cedarwood Drive. Yes, everything was pretty normal. Things only began to get strange when Ruby arrived home. She swung open the gate and saw that the front door to the house was standing open and a police car was parked in the drive. As she walked up the stairs to the kitchen, she could hear the voice of Sheriff Bridges. Now, what is he doing here? It didn't take Ruby long to find out. She stood there in the living room, open-mouthed. Everything had gone. Well, almost everything. The telephone was still plugged into its socket and was sitting on the floor. Apart from that, the house was empty as a house could be. Even the dust was gone. It was obvious to anyone, even someone who had never visited the Redfoots before, that they had been burgled. Yes, said her mother, sec second-guessing her daughter's thoughts. Every room is full of nothing. I'm a numbers person and we're all numbers people.